Hey YouTubers, it's Aaron again here. My last video was a walkthrough of creating a piano effect chain using the Ravenscroft 275 as the base sample library and turning it into a much more dynamic responsive instrument using Slate Digital plugins and Sound Toys plugins. I thought afterwards I would see if I could challenge myself to do a similar thing using the built-in or the default Ableton piano, which I don't like. I just don't care for the tonality or the responsiveness of it, but I thought, hey, why not? Let's just see what we can do with the Ableton piano. Now, I've actually worked with it quite a bit, but I just never use it for any projects because I <laughs> frankly can't stand how it plays. So this will be a little bit of a challenge, but if you've watched the other video, you'll know that I like using the Slate Digital and Sound Toys plugins because they bring a certain color and analog presence to working inside the box. You know, when you're working entirely within software, it can often tend to be too sterile and clean. And I feel like that's the case with a lot of the Ableton or the built-in Ableton effects is that the reverb is just a reverb and in a way it's too pure. So you have to do other things to it to dirty it up and give it a little bit of character. So that's kind of where I am with the Ableton Grand Piano. Um, I have never liked it, but let's give this a shot here. So first things first, I'm going to drop in the Ableton piano uh, just so I don't blow you guys away. I'm going to turn the volume down just a bit. All right, so let's play this and see how it responds. It's very mid-range heavy, and I'm playing as softly as I can play, and it's, it's just not responding how I want it to respond. On any other piano, I would usually go in and adjust the velocity curve, but here on this Ableton piano, the only thing we have is this hardness control, which if you expand that out, it is adjusting a little velocity effect here we could see it affecting that so let's let's bring this way down to the extremes and just see what it does it's really cutting off my ability to play into the upper or the higher dynamic levels so let's bring it back up There we go. That responds well enough for me for now. So let's move on and let's look at this tone. Let's just take all the values and go to their minimum and maximum and see what it does. That adds a lot more low end. adds mids and highs that I don't necessarily like. So let's find a balance. As I mentioned in the other video, one of my primary goals when I sit down with any piano library is to see if I can come up with the most playable solo piano that I can. So that's one of the reasons that I go through as many settings as I can and just experiment at both the top and the bottom of the range is to see how it changes the responsiveness of the instrument. Now I'm actually kind of liking how this is fitting in right here. And I like that hardness level. I'm gonna bring in the built-in reverb down I'm also going to increase the release time. Let's bring that up a bit. Sounds a little bit more realistic, like the, the strings are actually just kind of slowly dying away in a grand piano there. Now let's look at this tone. Let's see what this does. Let's crank it all the way up. All the way down. So I think that's some other type of EQ adjustment here too. So let's kind of 
find a good balance. Let's try about that. Yeah, that's a little honky. Let's bring it back. Alright, that feels a little bit better. I feel like we're getting close. Make sure to test it across the whole range of the piano and test it at various velocity levels to see how it responds. That'll work for us for now. So let's call that good on the piano itself. And then when I approach piano, let's just listen to that again. There's that little bit of release, but there's not much to it. I, I feel like the piano is really thin. There's not a lot of depth to it. So one of the things we can do is add a little bit of resonance using a reverb. So I'm just gonna drop in the default reverb here. Now my goal for this reverb is to add just a little bit of mid-range depth. So I'm gonna bring the decay time down quite a bit. Size, I may come back a little. Actually, let's bring the dry wet mix all the way up just so we can hear exactly what the reverb type is. I want this to also be fairly narrow. And I feel like there's too much chorus and spin going on here, so let's bring those down. There we go. Maybe bring that decay time up just a hair. Now let's roll some of the highs off. Okay, so now let's bring the dry wet mix back all the way. So this is off. Let's bring it up to 50 and just see where it sits. Up a little bit more. All right, I'm actually really liking that. Sitting about 65%. I'm gonna turn the reverb off. Turn it on. Do you hear that? That type of reverb with a, a fairly good high cut filter there is kind of just adding some depth and resonance. It feels like it increases the size of the piano's soundboard, and I like that. I think it just gives it a little bit of depth, maybe just a little bit less spin here too. Let's keep bringing that down. I'm using fairly short notes just to hear the tail, but if I were to play regularly here, it just adds a nice depth to it. In fact, I might back it off just a little bit. That's actually pretty decent. Again, AB, just so you can hear, here's the flat instrument by itself, adding just a little bit of that low mid. All right, I'm just gonna call that good for my soundboard resonance. So now let's look at the rest of our signal chain. If we were miking a piano in a studio, we'd have microphones going into a preamp, going into a mixing console. And as you can see in my uh, previous video where I'm using Slate Digital stuff, I'm emulating a few preamps and virtual consoles there. But using the native Ableton effects here, I'm gonna drop a saturator on. And this is just going to give us a little bit of saturation. Turn it back on. Let's turn up the drive and see what it's doing. I need to test that, make sure it's not clipping at all. Okay, so that's 
it's a very subtle saturation there. Just turn it back off. Turn it back on. Let's just play around with this frequency and see what it's doing. I'm kind of liking that. And then sometimes let's just do a couple instances of some very subtle plugins here. So I'm going to duplicate it a few times and just see what it does. Kind of like that, but I'm going to back each one off just a bit because I was collectively adding gain there. Now that's interesting. It adds just a little bit of weight, a little bit of saturation there, and I'm liking that. So let's call that good for now. And so those three will kind of simulate our preamp. All right, now let's look at some EQ because I am not liking the tone of this, even though on the bass grand piano there were a few tone controls and a brightness control here, it's still not exactly where I would like to have a piano sit. To me, it feels very center heavy, very mid-range heavy. So let's look at an EQ here. I'm just going to bring this up so we can see it a little bit better. I'm just going to start by grabbing number three three here. I'm going to move it back. I'm going to start about 500. I'm going to make it a fairly narrow, fairly narrow band here. And I'm just going to increase the gain and sweep and find those frequencies. there we can kind of see is awful so let's pull that back now let's reduce the size of that let's take a little dip here here let's make it a little bit narrower see what we can do to drop that a bit here we're about gonna come up a little bit closer to about 200 a little over 200 as I'm playing around here with extremes, I'm liking that coming out just a little bit more. play through the frequencies here, play down the scale, we can see where it sticks out and annoys us here. Let's see if we bring some of that back, what it does. Like that's cleaning it up just a little bit here.
below that low end. Let's try a little bit more of a low cut here. Let's balance it a little bit. Here we go. Less boomy. Back to number three. I'm just going to try increasing the width of it here. Ooh, there we go. I feel like it's finally getting somewhere usable here. Well, let's just go back and turn this off, do an AB. Here's the piano with all the EQ turned off. Turn it back on. That sounds quite a bit better to me. Just kind of cleans it up, opens it up. I feel, I feel like it can finally breathe. So let's move on. The next thing I would usually do is drop on a little compression. So let's bring in a little bit of a glue compressor. Again, with this being a solo piano, I usually like to find something that lets me play at low to mid dynamic levels without any compression. But as soon as I start digging in, we can hear it's already clipping just a little bit. So let's adjust this compressor and pull back just a little bit. I'm going to bring the release up a bit, just so we have a little bit slower release. I think the ratio is good at four here. And the attack, let's bring it down just a hair. And then let's start adjusting the threshold to see when it starts applying. And we'll see as soon as the needle starts moving, whether or not compression is being applied. There we can see it. That's getting right about there. At this level, I'm just barely just barely touching it, but as I dig in, there we go. All right, I'm still hearing a little clipping, so I wonder if we can turn off one of these saturators. Let's see. There we go, that's working. Again, that kind of that pattern is kind of just walking down the keyboard to see where the frequencies are working or not working for me. In fact, I might bring this threshold up just a bit. There we go. All right, so that compressor is only applying when I really dig into it. It just kind of helps even it out. And that's very workable. All right, let's move on. Now let's put, a, put the piano in a little bit more of a space here. So I'm gonna go back to another reverb. This time my goal with the reverb is going to be to add just a bit of space around the piano. We've got a good resonant piano. And again, that first reverb is kind of acting as a soundboard resonance. So let's turn this reverb on and make more of a space for the piano to sit in. So let's just crank the wet dry all the way up for now, just so we can work on the reverb tone itself. Definitely way too much spin and way too much chorus. Let's hear that again. 
Increase that delay time. Let's go up to almost three seconds. Let's crank the size. Let's change the quality up. Let's bring some of those highs back because that's kind of what I want. And I'm hearing the p attack of the piano get crowded out by the reverb, so I'm going to increase that pre-delay a bit here. And that is helping. Uh, let's bring some of that high back yet even more. Let's cut some of the lows, though. Maybe a little bit more time here. Pull that back even more. Now I know it doesn't sound awesome right now because we're 100% wet. So let's bring this back and let's slowly bring it up. here. That actually sounds pretty good. Actually, we can maybe come back to, let's say, 35% here. All right, we're getting really close. I'm very happy with that. Now, another trick that I like to do to add a little bit more depth is use just a hint of a delay. So I'm gonna drop in a filter delay here. And let's just see what it's doing by default, which is way out of control. So let's turn off the left and right. Again, when I'm building a piano sound, I usually like to add three dimensionality and some depth and a very slight delay. I'm just gonna change this to the second beat here. That's kind of working. Uh, it's a little high on the feedback, so let's see. Let's pull this down. I really just want that one extra pulse. Now let's bring the level down. All right, now let's adjust this filter. I'm gonna pull that down so it's a little bit darker. As you see, as I move in that dot, it's pulling more of the high end out. So now I kind of have this mid-rangey echo. It just kind of sounds like it's hitting the walls of a, an auditorium or something. It's not really doing much of a delay. In fact, when I'm playing legato and playing like I would usually play, you don't even really hear it at all. So we can maybe even bring this level up just a bit. But if I play very short notes, you can hear what it's doing. It's just adding depth to the whole sound. So now let's bring the dry up so the dry signal comes through even more. Again, very short note so you can hear what it's doing. In fact, it could come up just a bit. And now let's adjust that feedback up. All right, and if we play it out here. That's not half bad. Now, one thing we could do at the very, very end here is we could come back and we could add just a bit more saturation again. Uh, this time I'm gonna choose a soft sign. And actually, there's a preset that I've used before too. It's just one of the built-in presets called Hot Tubes. Um, it just sounds really warm. Let's do it before and after with that one. So here it is turned off, turned on. I'm going to 
bring that output down just a little bit. All right, so let's group all of these together into an effects rack just so we can turn the whole thing on and off. So here again is the built-in Ableton Grand Piano, just with the Grand Piano pack. And then let's turn on our effects chain. I will say this right here is the most I have ever liked Ableton's Grand Piano. So anyway, there's a lot you can do using the Ableton effects. If you know what you're going for, if you know what you're trying to duplicate, in this case, I'm trying to duplicate a lot of analog gear, especially with that saturation and using some of the reverbs and delays just to add three dimensionality and depth to things. I'm not really using it to wash this whole piano out in reverb. But from here, since this is a really good starting point for a piano, I could then compress it to pieces or soak it in reverb and do all kinds of other things with it to create more of an effective piano. But this is a really good start uh, for just a good basic all around piano. And it's surprisingly impressive considering that it came from Ableton's grand piano. So I'm curious to see what you've come up with too uh, with the Ableton grand piano. So let me know in the comments. Um, and if you haven't watched the other video where I use the Ravenscraft 275 with Slate Digital plugins and Sound Toys plugins, it's a completely different type of piano sound that you can come up with because so much more of those plugins are modeled after analog gear. So anyway, piano on.